Family Theater presents Frank Leahy and Jack Haley. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network in cooperation with Family Theater presents Past Imperfect, starring Jack Haley. And now, here is your host, Frank Leahy. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now, to our transcribed drama, Past Imperfect, starring Jack Haley as Jim. You want it on the phone, dear. Oh. Oh, I guess I dropped off, honey. Oh, just once I'd like to have you come home at night from the office without a briefcase full of work. I'll taper off in a few weeks. That's what you said last month. Sometimes I wish you'd never been elected president of the firm. Ah, uh, don't you worry. I'm feeling fine. Who's calling? Oh, Mr. Wilson. He says he's with the Johnson Cement Company. Do you know him? No, but I got a lunch appointment with one of Johnson's big competitors tomorrow. Wonder what this fellow wants. Oh, I don't know. Shall I tell him you're not here? No, no, no. I'll talk to him. Hello. Yes, this is Mr. Steele. What can I do for you? Yes, I know your firm. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't believe I've ever met you, Mr. Wilson. I... Uh, your name is what? George Wilson? From Terrenceville? What is it, dear? Why, why, yes, I sure do remember you very, very well. You want to talk about what? Tonight? Oh, oh, you'd like my company to buy some of your cement for a change. Well, that's very interesting. Why, sure, sure, I'd be glad to see you, George. About an hour? Sure, come on over. We'll talk about old times. Of all the crust. Jim, what's the matter? George Wilson. George Wilson coming to me for a favor. Jim, will you stop fuming and tell me? Doesn't that mean anything to you? George Wilson? Uh, in Terrenceville? We used to call him Windy Wilson. Windy, Windy Wilson. The town skunk. The biggest little bully in the county. Wendy Wilson. Well, what's he doing here after all these years? He's a salesman for Johnson Cement. A salesman. Imagine that. But his family was so wealthy. Why, they owned half the town. And they acted like they owned all of it. Wendy Wilson. The little stinker. Now, Jim. I wish I had a dime for every time he beat me up. Just a dime. Now there's no sense in losing your temper. I'd be rich. You are rich, Jim. You're a success. It's silly to let a childhood grudge upset you. But the nerve! That's what gets me. The nerve of that guy expecting me to help him. Well, why did you ask him to come over if you don't intend to help him? To tell him off. That's why. I've been waiting for over 30 years for this chance. Oh, Jim, this isn't like you. The little stuff. Stinker. But he's not a little stinker now. He's a middle-aged man trying to make a living. To me, he's still the same lazy little louse who was always telling everyone what a big deal he was and how much dough his old man had. Then you're not going to help him. Sure, sure, I'll help him. I'll help him out of here on the end of my foot after I tell him what I think of him. Oh, Jim. Oh, I'm going back to the study and do a little more work. Now, if you go up to bed before Wilson gets here, knock on the door so I can be listening for the bell. Jim, I wish you didn't feel this way. 
I wouldn't if Wilson had been a different kind of guy. Good night, Lois. Good night, dear. <sighs> Wendy Wilson. Boy, wouldn't it have been a pleasure when we were kids if I knew then I was going to be a success and Wendy a failure? <laughs> Boy, would I have told him. Would I have told him off. Things would have been different. Plenty different. Even that day way back in sixth grade when he beat me out for the pitcher's job because he owned the baseball. Okay, fellas, you make up your mind. Who do you want to have for a pitcher, me? Or this little runt here. Who are you calling a runt, Wendy? I'm calling you a runt, Jimmy Steele. Yeah. Yeah. So shut up or I'll knock your teeth out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's my baseball, so I'm going to pitch. Yeah. Or there's no game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess if you're going to be like that about it. I'm going to be just like that about it. Okay, you guys, batter up. Of all the stinkers... Boy, if he only knew that someday I'm going to be a big deal, then he... Say, wait a minute. I know I'm going to be a big deal. Why don't I tell him? Why don't I just tell him all about it? Listen, Runt, I said I was going to pitch. Now go chase yourself. Boy, are you riding for fall, Wendy? Huh? You are really a sad man. You don't know what's in store for you. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you, you big phony. You're going to wind up coming to me for a job someday, do you know that? A job? Are you nutty? My old man owns the bank and half the real estate in town. He's got more dough than you could count. Now get off the mound. Yeah, ten years from now, he's going to be broken a stock market crash. What kind of crash is that? You'll see. And I'll tell you something else. You're going to be a bum all your life. You shut up or I'll lay one on you. Go ahead. I'm going to be rich and you're going to be a bum, so hit me. Why, you little punk. And another thing, you're going to lose this game by 14 runs because you can't pitch for sour apples. That's all you know. I'm going to win. You watch. I watched and Wendy lost, just like I told him he would. He was awful, really awful, but he wouldn't quit because it was his baseball. Boy, did he take a shellacking and was I happy. On the way home, I met Lois Johnson. She was the prettiest girl in the fifth grade then. And I told her how Wendy had lost the game. I didn't know he was going to come along and beat me up. Uh, I'm sorry you didn't get to pitch, Jimmy. I don't care. I'm better than he is anyhow. I practice. The only reason he pitches is because he owns the ball. Oh, look. Here he comes now. Who? Wendy, see? Oh, my gosh, I better get out of here. Are you afraid of him? Well, no, but... Hello, Lois. How come you're talking to that little runt? Jimmy is not a little runt, Wendy Wilson, and he's a better pitcher than you are. Oh, yeah? 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 Well, let's see how tough you are, Jimmy. Knock this chip off my shoulder. Go ahead, I dare you. Knock it off. <laughs> What a rat. Boy, if he only knew what a good boxer I was going to be in college, he wouldn't pick a fight with me. No, sir, he wouldn't have the nerve. If I only knew what a sucker he is for a right cross, I, I... Say, wait. I do know what a sucker he is. Why don't I just set him up with a left? Let him drop his guard and then give it to him. Go ahead. Knock this chip off my shoulder. I dare you. Okay, Wendy. There. Why, you... Jimmy, look out. I'm okay. You think so, huh? Yeah, on account of this. <laughs> oh. Jimmy, you knocked him down. <laughs> you hit me in the eye. Yeah, and if you don't get up off that sidewalk, I'll hit you in the other eye, too. Wendy, you're hurt. It's a science. The trouble with you, Wendy, is you don't know how to box. <laughs> Yeah? Yeah. You're not only going to be a failure as you go through life, you won't even be able to defend yourself. Come on, get up. I'll knock you down again. Uh, don't you dare knock him down, Jimmy Steele. You're nothing but a bully. A bully? Lois, don't talk that way, Lois. You and I are going to be married someday. Married? 
I'll never marry a bully. But Lois... Don't you even talk to me. Come on, Wendy, I'll help you at home. <laughs> Thanks, Lois. Hey, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. You just wait, Jimmy Steele. I'm going to take boxing lessons and pitching lessons, and someday I'll come around and you'll be sorry. That's all you know. I'm going to be president of the biggest engineering firm in the country someday. You will not. You're just a bully, and you're full of hot air. That's all. Hot air, huh? That's what he thinks. I'm going to be a big deal. That's what. A big operator. All I gotta do is wait and let it happen. Just wait and let it happen. So I don't finish at the top of the class in grammar school or high school. So I even have trouble getting into college. What of it? I'm gonna be a big deal. Mr. Steele? Yes, sir. I regret to inform you that the Dean of Engineering School feels your work is too unsatisfactory for you to continue at the university. You... you mean I'm being dropped, sir? I'm afraid so. But listen, you can't do that. Oh, I wouldn't take it so hard, James. After all, perhaps you aren't suited to the work. But... but I am. I know. I'm going to finish with honors. Oh, come, Mr. Steele. One has to study to finish it all, much less with honors. You've been here for two years, and you've loafed the whole time. But I'm going to be president of a great engineering firm someday. I've got to graduate. Oh, and what's the name of this firm? The Whitcomb Company. Whitcomb Company? Never heard of them. Well, it hasn't been formed yet, but it's going to be a big outfit. And I'm going to run it. Well, I wish you every success, Mr. Steele. But I suggest that before you become affiliated with an engineering firm, you first become an engineer. Well, I... I'm going to become one. Perhaps, perhaps you shall. But not at this university. Of all the boneheads, doesn't he know who I am? Who I'm going to be someday? I don't get it. Everything's wrong. Everything's backwards. Even in Terrenceville, when I come back and start to work in the bank that summer, everything's wrong. Hello, Mr. Steele. Lois, I didn't know you were working here. Oh, yes. George and I are saving up to be married. George? You... you mean Wendy? I wouldn't let George hear you call him by that name if I were you. You wouldn't, eh? Don't tell me he'd like to start a fight about it. Why don't you ask him? He's standing right behind you. Right behind... what? Hello, Jim. How are things in college? Uh, not, uh, not bad. I hear you decided to give up engineering. That's right. What about it? Not a thing. Seems too bad, that's all. I'm going to night school to study the same thing. Thought we might be able to help one another. I don't need any help from you. I guess you don't at that. How come you're going to night school? Do your old man run out of money? <laughs> well, just, just like you said that day, the crash got him. Whole family strapped. Well, that must be quite a come down for you. Oh, we don't mind so much, do we, honey? I kind of like it, George. Say, what's going on here? Lois, you aren't going to marry this phony, are you? I am. You got any objections, Steele? Well, I... You two can't get married. Lois is going to marry me. <laughs> marry you? Yes, me. I, I'm going to be a big deal. You've been saying that ever since we were kids, but you've never done anything about it. All you do is shoot your mouth off. You shut up, Wendy. I don't have to shut up for you, Steele. You're a 14-carat phony. Sure, my folks went broke, but I did something about it. I went to work, and I've got you to thank for it. Me? That's right. If you hadn't knocked my block off that day when we were kids, I'd be just like you, full of hot air, marching around town telling everybody what a rough customer I was. Yeah, well, I got news for you, Wendy. I'm a plenty rough customer. Before you try anything, yeah. I should tell you I've taken those boxing lessons. So what? So I don't like people to call me Wendy. Why, you... George, look I'm out. okay, honey. You think so, huh? Yeah, don't you? <laughs> George, you knocked him down. Oh, the rat knocking me down. Me, James Steele. Will he be sorry? Just wait until I'm president of the Whitcomb Engineering Company, that's all. Just wait. More beans, Jimmy? 
No, thanks, Mom. I'm not hungry. No reason you should be. Now, Willis. Loafing around the house all day. Here we go again. You bet we do. Now, Dad, Jimmy explained why he left the shoe company. I had no future there. Yeah, and you didn't have much of a past either. I'd like to see you just once hang on to a job two weeks running. I stayed almost six months with the department store. That was five years ago. Son, what's the matter with you? Most men your age are settled down, married, got a good job. I'll settle down when the right opportunity comes along. Jimmy's just looking around for something with a future. Looking around? You mean daydreaming? It isn't daydreaming. You wait and see. Now, don't start in on the Whitcomb Engineering Company again. I'm a little sick of that. There isn't any such company. There is. There's got to be. Now, Jimmy, please. I tell you I know there is, Mom. Well, what if there was? You're no engineer. You had a chance to be one, but you loafed it away. It doesn't matter. I'm going to run the place someday. I've heard enough of this nonsense. I knew you were lazy, but I didn't think you were addled. You see how addled I am. No, I won't. I've seen too much already. Dad, what are you saying? I'm saying Jim's on his own. We've put up with this long enough. Willis. It's all right, Mom. I don't want to stay where I'm not wanted. Oh, Willis, he's your son. He's a lazy good-for-nothing. Yeah? Yeah. Well, if you're going to be like that about it... I'm going to be just like that about it. Now get out. Of all the stinkers, my own dad. But this isn't the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be married to Lois, and an up-and-coming executive with the Whitcomb Engineering Company. But I don't even know where the Whitcomb Engineering Company is. Maybe, maybe if I could find it, maybe if I just looked and looked and looked. Come in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Winters? Yes, yeah, Steele, sit down. Is anything wrong, sir? Well, perhaps that's something you can clear up. When we hired you as a salesman, you gave very good out-of-town references. Yes, sir. Among them, the Bradley Towel Company in Cincinnati. That's true, sir, but... The Edgemont Roofing Company in Long Island. Yes, sir, however, And I... the Wilmot Insurance Company in Kansas City. Well, I, I have worked for each of them. That's true, as this employee investigation report certifies. Well, then what are you asking? But, according to the report... You grossly misrepresented both your income and job tenure with each of these firms. That's not true, sir. Your signed application says that you worked for Bradley Towel for almost three years at a weekly salary of $200. Now look here, Mr. You Winters. You said on your application that you worked there from 1940 to 1944. Well, it wasn't quite that long. Steele, you've jumped around this country from job to job for almost 20 years. What's the matter with you? What are you looking for? I... I'm looking for the Whitcomb Engineering Company. Never heard of them. They're a big outfit. I know they are. There's no such company in this town. They've got to be somewhere. What good would you be in an engineering firm? You're no engineer. I'll take lessons. I'll practice. You wait and see. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You little runt, this is my company, and I'm going to be boss. And you're fired. Who are you calling a runt? I'm calling you a runt, so shut up or I'll knock your teeth out. You big phony. You, you're going to wind up coming to me for a job someday, you know that? Mr. Steele is not a little runt, Mr. Winters, and he's a better pitch man than you are. Lois! Oh, yeah? Batter up! And you wouldn't pick on me if, if you knew what a sucker you were for right cross. Get off the mound or I'll hit you with this bag of cement. Cement? Yes, yeah, cement. Johnson cement. Schenectady, New York. <laughs> Schenectady, New York. Johnson cement. That's the place. That's where the Whitcomb Engineering Company must be. I know. I'll get a job with the Johnson Cement Company. They're a big outfit. And then I'll sell the Whitcomb Engineering Company a whole carload of cement, and they'll hire me. Someday I'll be president. Whitcomb Engineering. Whitcomb Engineering. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, do you want some cement? Johnson Cement? No, thank you. Call back later when he's in. When who's in? Mr. George Windy Wilson, president of the Whitcomb Engineering Company. He buys all the cement we need. Windy Wilson? That's right. Why, Mom, don't you recognize me? No. What are you looking around for? Something with a future? I'm looking for the Whitcomb Engineering Company, and this is it. It's got to be. Jimmy, please. I know it is. I'm going to run this place someday. Windy Wilson buys all the cement. I'm sorry. Is he in? Is Mr. Windy Wilson, the little stinker, in? 
No, but here's his briefcase. He takes it home every night since he's been elected president of the company, but tonight he left it behind. Why did he do that, Mom? Well, he promised Lois that just one night he'd come home from the office without his briefcase. But I don't want his briefcase. Why are you giving it to me? Because this is the right opportunity, and you don't want to stay where you're not wanted. Take the briefcase and bring it out to Wendy's house. I can't. Why don't I wait till I'm a big deal? I always knew you were lazy, but I never knew you were a big deal. Mom, where's Dad? I'm right here fixing the switchboard. It's a steady job. It's something you can settle down to. Well, how, how long have you been fixing it? All my life, son. It's the only job I've ever had. I've really settled down. That's what you ought to do. I'm going to, Dad. I'm only 45 years old, and I'm ready to settle down. Great. Isn't that great, Mom? Great, Willis. <laughs> Whitcomb Engineering. Whitcomb Engineering. I'm going to sell this bag of cement, Dad. I'm going to sell every bit of it. Well, if you're going to be like that about it. I'm going to be just like that about it. Whitcomb Engineering. Thank you, Wendy. Was that Wendy, the little rat on the phone, Mom? Yes, and he's waiting for you. Waiting? For his briefcase and your bag of cement. You better get started. But, but where is he? In his big, rich home with Lois. Five miles through the cold and snow. What's the address, Mom? It doesn't matter. I always knew you were lazy, son. You wait and see. What direction, Mom? Any direction, dear, just as long as it's five miles. And don't forget your cement bag. It's, it's all wrong. Five miles. And what's Mom doing working for the Whitcomb Engineering Company? I'm the one who's supposed to be president, not Wendy. It's all wrong. It's so cold. Look at all these rich houses. Bet I'd have a rich house if I hadn't beaten Wendy up that day in front of Lois when we were kids. What a little rat. That's what made him so ambitious. I beat him up, the little rat. This is his address. Wendy Wilson, 60,000 Money Street. Right on the mailbox. The stinker. Look at that house. That's my house. It ought to be. But it's his, Wendy Wilson's. And he has to buy my cement. The whole bag or I'm a failure. I... I don't understand it. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. I knew he was a sucker for right cross. I knew his dad would go broke in the crash. I knew everything that would happen to him. But he didn't, it didn't do any good. He's the president of the Whitcomb Engineering Company. Look at that doorbell, gold. A golden doorbell. Wendy Wilson's golden doorbell, the little rat. Well, it's too late to turn back now. This is the only thing I can do that's got a future. I'll ring it. What a doorbell. Oh, if I just hadn't beaten him up that day. What a bum Wendy Wilson be. <laughs> so poor. That's where I made my mistake. I shouldn't have beat him up. I should have let him beat me up, the way he did the first time. Uh, uh, well, what are you gonna do? Jim. Uh, Lois? Wake up. It's George Wilson, dear. He's come to see you. Wendy? Wendy? He's just arrived. Please be nice to him, Jim. Oh, where's my cement? Jim, dear, wake up. I'm awake, the little stinker. I, Are you I... all right, dear? Yeah, 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 honey. I, I, I guess I was dreaming. Uh, is Wendy Wilson really here to see me? Yes, but I wouldn't call him Wendy, dear. If I were you, I'm sure he doesn't like it. Oh, you wouldn't, eh? Jim, what's the matter? Don't tell me you'd like to start a fight about it. Darling, get hold of yourself. You're still asleep. No, no, honey. I... I just had kind of a nightmare. Oh, you've been working too hard. No, I haven't. I... You wouldn't marry Wendy, would you? <laughs> Darling, of course not. I'm married to you. I have been for 20 years. Even... Even if I beat him up, you'd still marry me? Jim, are you still asleep? No, no, I just wanted to be sure this was real. It's very real. And Jim... Yeah? Before you... Wendy, I mean George... Yes? But how happy we've been. I mean, well, you can't get any real satisfaction out of hurting someone who goes back so far in our lives. Hurt him? Wendy? Jim, what's the matter? Wendy Wilson, you ask me not to hurt him? Jim, dear, please don't say anything you'll be sorry for. Don't you worry. 
Mr. Wilson? Do, do you remember me, Jim? Sure, Wendy, I remember you. Well, I, I was hoping you would. I remember the day in sixth grade when you wouldn't let me pitch because you owned the baseball. Yeah, that was... Well, that was a long time ago. Yeah, but I remember it. And I remember the same afternoon when you beat me up in front of Lois. I, I guess I was a real bully in those days. That's what you were, Wendy. Now you want to sell me some cement. Hmm. Well, I... Uh, it's a good line. It's good cement, Jim. I wouldn't care how good it was. Uh, you wouldn't? Nope. Because good or bad... I'd buy it anyhow, Wendy. <laughs> you mean that? Sure I do. It's the only way I have of thanking you. Thanking me? That's right. But f for what? For beating me up that day and all those other days. I, I don't understand, Jim. I guess I shouldn't expect you to, Wendy. It's something I didn't even understand myself until just a little while ago when I had a chance to... to sleep on it. This is Frank Leahy again. I suppose it's only natural that being a football coach, or rather an ex-football coach, I'd be mighty conscious of how important team play can be in any endeavor. Very few of us can accomplish even the simplest tasks single-handed. We need help. In football, there is no such thing as a one-man team, just as in music, there is no such thing as a one-man orchestra. And even though teams and orchestras may have their stars, the stars always look or sound a lot better when the rest of the organization is playing with them. It's that way with families, too. Every member has to work together, play together, and not incidentally, pray together. Because a family, like a team, is a unit. And the closer the members of that unit can draw together through a common dependence upon God, the father of them all, more certain they can be of his help and guidance. That's what family theater means when it reminds us each that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Past Imperfect, starring Jack Haley. Frank Leahy was your host. Others in our cast were Gail Bunny, Virginia Gregg, Howard Culver, Herb Butterfield, and Dave Young. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to that need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Door, starring Cameron Mitchell. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.